I want to start today by reading you a testimony. I have a friend of mine who, you know, we were together in church, just my, my teenage years, my young years. Now he's, he's in the ministry, he's in the U.S., so he spent a, a big chunk of his life uh, doing ministry there. So we are a group of friends that we were singing together when I know I was in one of the groups that I was in. So, you know, people share all kinds of things. So he shared, two days ago or so, shared uh, a video of his daughter singing. You know, so he just shared, you know, so like um, all of us proud fathers, I thought he just wanted us to see how good the daughter is. And she can sing, sing very well. So she sang, then people obviously appreciated, commented. Then he decides to send a follow-up message. And this is what he talks about. He says, thank you everyone for the kindness and compliment expressed to our daughter. She is a great testimony of God's healing. When she was born, she developed a severe ear infection in both ears and upon testing her hearing, the medical personnel determined that she would be speech impaired because she could not hear clearly to develop the right sounds. We had, to, we had a very difficult early childhood development with the school insisting that she should go to the special needs classes. My wife and I prayed and we believed God for her healing. We stood our ground and refused for our daughter to be labeled or put in a special needs class. As she moved for pre-K or kindergarten, she developed interest in singing <clears throat> and was part of the kids Christmas program that year and what happened next was the miracle we had been waiting for. Her music teacher asked if she could try out for a solo part in a song to which she joyfully agreed and to the teacher's belief, Lorenz was pitch perfect. She sang through all the notes on point. We went back to the doctor for evaluation there was, so much, there was so much scarring in her ears, but she could hear all the frequencies clearly. Today she can tell you what key a song is. Sorry, today she can tell you what key a song is in just by listening to it. So we give God all the glory for what he has done and continues to do. And then he puts an extra note at all. She plays piano, guitar, and drums too. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like that. How to minister to your family. And because you can see my sub message today is pray prayers that get answered. Pray prayers that get answered. I want to start by trying to go in the mind of God. If I was to ask God, what is your desire for each of my family members? What is your desire? For my marriage and each of the marriages of your children. I think I'll hear something like this. My desire is for each of your family members to become my children. Who enjoy all the rights and the benefits that come with it. 
Have you ever looked at a family member and you've called them? This is a black sheep. And maybe as you look at them, you are just saying that there's just no hope. Maybe they have denied God. They have said that may I have nothing to do with God and you have written them off. But according to the scriptures, our mindset towards them must change. Instead of seeing that black sheep, that lost soul, turn your heart and start seeing them as a candidate for salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's God's desire. The scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, it tells us about God's desire. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hallelujah. God desires all men. And maybe in your own time, I want you to substitute what it says all men and put the name of that black sheep, that brother of yours, that sister, that son, that daughter of God, of yours, and say, God desires John to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Imagine your loved one saved, victorious over all the power of Satan. Imagine your loved one experiencing the provisions of God on a daily basis. Imagine them walking in hell. Can you see it? Or you just see a black sheep. When Jesus went to the cross, yes, we were lost without hope in this world. But he went with a vision for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross because he was seeing you and me saved. He was seeing you and me enjoying the full benefit of sonship. Maybe let's say daughtership, just in case I get in trouble. <laughs> That's God's heart. And so when we start a series like this, how to minister to your family, we are doing it because God desires all men to be saved. Now, if I was to ask him again, like I asked concerning our marriages, I think I will hear something like this. My desire is for your marriage to be godly. Hallelujah. To be joyful, full of joy, to be fulfilling, and to be glorifying to me. I think I'll hear. Now, if you can analyze and look at your marriage today, can you say it's godly? Can you say it's full of joy, just unspeakable, overflowing joy is fulfilling and it is glorifying to God? Now, if it's not like that, don't settle where you are, amen? Because according to God's desire is that he wants your marriage to be full of joy, to be a fulfilling relationship, to be glorifying to God. Like Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18. He says, may your fountain be blessed. And may you rejoice, sorry, may you endure in the wife of your youth. We were told, you know, in that daughter I've mentioned to you before, you know, they, culturally, people would say marriage, when people are getting married, they'll say, welcome to the Endurance Club. You know, they tell you, you know, now okay, you are in now. Forget about the expectation of bliss and joy. Here it is endurance. You will get used. Now, if you've gotten used to just enduring, maybe this series is for you. Maybe it's time to say, no, my marriage will be godly. Hallelujah. My marriage will be joyful. My marriage will be fulfilling. 
my marriage will be glorifying to God. Amen. That's what we want. Malachi 2 verse 15 says, Has not the Lord God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God, what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. You know, uh, from each family, God seeks godly offspring. Amen? And I like that. That God's desire is for my children to be godly. Amen? To carry on the baton of righteousness. To carry on the message of the cross. To live the life that Christ is giving. So don't give up on your children. They may look like demons today. But in God's mind, they are candidates. Hallelujah. God wants to raise a godly offspring. And he will use you. He will use your home. Hallelujah. There's hope for our children. There's hope for this generation that is rising after us. Hallelujah. So that's what I would hear if I asked God what his desire and heart is towards family and towards our family members, towards our loved ones, towards our marriages, towards our children. And so this gives me hope. And this gives me encouragement. Now, to minister to your family, I think we have to start somewhere. And I think the starting point is on our knees. Amen. Pray prayers that get answered. Pray prayers that get answered. You see, it's one thing to pray, but it's another thing to pray prayers that are answered. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever taken stock of your prayer life and to see, you know, I pray maybe every day, but do my prayers ever get answered? Now, <clears throat> you owe it to your family to be a person who prays prayers that get answered. You owe it to those children. That you should become a person, a man or woman of prayer. And not just someone who just prays, going through the motion, but your prayers get answered. You see, through prayer, we partner with God. The greatest partner you ever have is God. Amen. Amen. He'll never crook you. He'll never agree with you and you go and then find yourself in a ditch. Hallelujah. He'll order your path in the way that you should go. Amen. Hallelujah. He will show you things to come. He will tell you what to do. But God wants to partner with you in your marriage. Partner with you in your parenting. You know, I have come now to believe in spirit-led parenting. Because just to try to parent using things I've seen, you know, and things I see on TV and everywhere, I will miss it. But if I can partner with God in raising children, I will speak life in those children. Instead of turning to a child and telling that child, you, you, you will end up nowhere, I'll tell them. You know, the hand of the Lord is upon you. Amen. I won't stop praying for you because I believe God has a purpose for your life. My language towards that child will be different. I partner with the Holy Ghost in the way I speak to the child. We'll talk about talking later on in the series. Now, the unfortunate thing is a lot of God's children underestimate what can be done through prayer? I think partly it's because many of God's children are not experiencing a prayer life that is marked with clear answers to prayer. 
And it does show that when you get in trouble, where do you run to first? Cell phone. To text, to call. Some of you are still mommy's kids. Mommy! <laughs> You know, you can tell just how much you believe in prayer by your actions, not just by your mind. Because many times you think, I know I believe in prayer. But if your actions are going this way and your confession this way, you know, the truth is where your feet are going. We have said it, you know... Um, haven't you ever wondered how it is easy to get people to come to a dinner? Especially when it's free. <laughs> that it is to get people to a prayer meeting, which is free. <laughs> because I think we underestimate what can be done when people of God get on their knees. To pray. Now prayer that gets answered. I'm not going to dive into this. We'll deal with this in our life groups this week. We'll talk about prayer that gets answered. But let me just highlight two things. But more things will be discussed. Prayer that gets answered is prayer prayed in faith. James 1, 6 to 7 says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind then it does give a very honest conclusion for let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord so you can pray but you're praying with doubt. But in your mind, you're just, I think it will happen. Let not that person suppose <laughs> that they will receive anything from God. Prayer that gets answered, prayer prayed in faith. We'll talk about this in our small groups. Then also maybe another part is prayer that gets answered is prayer that is fervent. James 6, 5, 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Other versions say the fervent prayer of a righteous person. So this fervent prayer is prayer of a righteous person. Now, I like this because... He took our sins. And then he gave us his righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. And as we are talking right now, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And guess what? Your prayers is powerful. Your prayer we will result in great answers. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we will deal with this in our small group. Uh, but I want to highlight things that we must pray for. Focus on praying. You must pray, number one, to receive a word from God. Now, this is normal how we pray for our families. We just pray. We almost pray random prayers. Like if it was shooting. You know how you take a machine gun. And you start shooting. Just that hopefully you hit something. But I think we need to get to a place where we start learning. To pray. To receive a word from God. For our families. For our marriages. For our children. If I asked you, what has God talked 
to you about concerning that child who is astray? Do you think God has something to say about that child? Amen? Amen. But have you heard that message? You see, we sing that song, I am a what? I am a, a friend of, we haven't sung that song in a long time. I am a friend of God. And it's really, we get it from Abraham. You know, God doesn't love hiding things. He says, should I hide what I'm about to do from Abraham? Remember what he said? So God comes and tells him, okay, I'm, I'm about to destroy this Sodom and Gomorrah. Then Abraham starts talking to God. And he asks God and God responds. I like that kind of prayer. Where I talk, God talks back. I think that's how prayer should be. Because I'm hearing God's whether He's directing me. But now we are used to praying, you know, where we just come and shout at God for two, three hours and walk out. And if I ask you, what did God say? I'm just believing, my brother, I'm believing. <laughs> that's why we develop certain habits and gimmicks about prayer. We think if I shout aloud, it's God to hear me. Remember those prophets that uh, Elijah mocked? See, they had this prayer life where they just prayed and just hoped this God somewhere from where he would do it. And so they developed what we do. They start cutting themselves. Just do something. Jump on the chair, scream, roar, or do anything to get his attention. But I think... Your goal should be conversation. Hallelujah. Where well, you can talk to God. I believe that many people wouldn't suffer the kind of issues they suffer in their families if they were hearing what God has to say. You know, you get a child who's looking for a job and there's this offer. It's a plea. This offer can't be passed. Please pray. Pastor, join us. Pray. But maybe as you pray, God may say, no, leave that one alone. But we never pray like that to hear. Well, God, you know, if the person goes that path, they'll get in trouble in five years. The men of old prayed like that. They prayed to hear from God. Part of their goal when there was an issue, they called it, we am going to inquire of the Lord. You know the story of David, he comes, the whole camp is ransacked. They have taken their children and their wives. I mean the children and their wives, yes. So Lord, what should I do now? Should I go after them or not? Say, go, I'll give you victory. We have said it many times, one word from God can change your life forever. One word from God can change your marriage forever. One word from God can change your children's life forever. Habakkuk. Chapter 2. Reading from verse 1. This is what Habakkuk is saying. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. And watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I am corrected. Okay, so he's coming to be like a watchtower to come He has to pray, talk to God. But notice how he said he'll be there. And what is he watching to here? Huh? What God is going to say. But when we go to pray, you know how I want to pray? I want to pray. And what I want to watch for is what God will do. So you pray, you pray, you pray. And tomorrow you, you go to work thinking, okay, the boss may just have said you have a raise. You just wait. 
And uh, he's not talking today, I'm being nice. So you're watching what the boss will do, watching what people will do. But I think we need to get to a place where we get a prayer life, where we are coming to watch and pray. But what we want to hear is what God will say. Do you pray like that? So we pray to watch what will happen. <laughs> But not really pray to hear God. A lot of counseling that happened wouldn't be happening today. Counselors would have very little jobs in church if people prayed and heard from God. I'm sorry doctors and counselors, but your jobs would be out there. Because people who hear from God get problems solved before they even get out of their closet. He will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. In his presence there is what? Fullness of joy. I have been in the ministry for a long time. I have never needed counseling for mental problems. I have faced issues that have disturbed me, but I've found every time I've gone to pray and gotten clarity, I have been at peace. I sleep. Ask my wife. You can carry me outside, find me outside. I said, oh, praise God, angels took me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> now they attack the attacked like struggles, of course. But when I go into his presence and listen, I get the word, peace be still, or don't worry about this, then I go on. Pray to receive a word from God. In this case, Habakkuk, verse, three, verse 2 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets. That, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak. And it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now, he's talking about a vision now. That vision is a word from God. Amen? Amen? Imagine God telling you, okay, no, don't worry about this. In three weeks' time, this is what will happen. Would you continue worrying? People will be surprised. But you, you look happy, but things are bad for you. Um, I know the end. And the one who holds my future has pronounced my end. Hallelujah. They're in trouble, they hope to be saved, shipwrecked, just problems. And people are saying we are dying, they're just prepared for death. Then Paul had a word from God, an angel stood by him, and he comes and announces, Oh, no one will die. They thought, No, this is crazy. But see, he had heard from God, he's praying involved receiving a word from God. Proverbs 29 verse 18 Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Other versions say where there is no vision, now, many times when we talk about vision, you know, we normally refer to what we dream, think about, and coin when we have meetings and so on. But here I'm talking about a word from God. Vision here is a word from God. You know, other versions will say where there is no prophetic word. Word from God. Maybe what you need right now concerning your marriage is to hear what God is saying. 
Maybe what you need right now concerning your children is to hear what is God saying. And what he's saying will direct how you respond. Hallelujah. The second thing you must pray is to get your loved ones delivered. I think just sorry there's a missed word. To get your loved ones delivered and restored. Amen. Now this is important because you are dealing with spiritual darkness and spiritual forces. Hallelujah. Now, if you came to this marriage series thinking I'll be telling you, you know, you know, go buy this nice shoe, then she walking. Now. <laughs> we cannot ignore what we are dealing with. The Bible says we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Ephesians 2 verse 2 says, In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rulers of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Hallelujah. Now, whether you will like it or not, every person who is not in Christ is under the authority and the power of the evil one. Every person, every person who is not in the faith is under the rule of the prince of the air, the power of darkness. And so when you are praying and dealing and ministering to your family, you are dealing with darkness. Hallelujah. And you don't deal with evil spirits, darkness, just by having discussion meetings. Now you've gone quieter when we talk about this. Satan's goal is to crush and to wreck your faith and that of your loved ones. Jesus talks to Peter on, he says, and the Lord said, this is in Luke 22, verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Now notice what Jesus did with the intention that the devil had towards Peter and his fellow friends. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Hallelujah. Notice how God deals with what the enemy intended to do in Peter's life and the friend's life. What did, what did, how did he deal with it? Through what? Prayer. My fellow brothers and sisters, the devil has asked for your children to destroy them. He has asked for your wife, for your husband, for your brothers. And the Holy Spirit is saying, pray for them, that their faith fail not. The Bible even says, when someone is caught up in a sin, we should pray for them. Same thing. We are dealing with spiritual darkness. Now we must confront the present darkness on our knees. They bring a boy to Jesus. He had an evil spirit that was tormenting him. And that demon wanted to kill him, throw him into the fire many times. 
They brought that boy to the disciples to pray for him and cure him. But they failed. And then Jesus, they asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast him out? And then he says, this, he told them first because of your unbelief. And then he says, this kind, this kind, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer. And other versions add, and fasting. He's not saying they bring this boy and say, okay, okay, sorry, this kind, let me go pray and fasting. No. Is that Jesus himself, because he deals with the case, but we see Jesus was a man of prayer. Could it be that the kind of bondages we are dealing with today require a praying mom, require a praying husband, require a praying son, require a praying church? See, we will not cast out spirits just by having pretty meetings. We push back the darkness on our knees. And that's why it's important to realize as you are dealing with your family, there is this spiritual dimension that is involved. I heard a story of uh, the late, I think Kenneth, had, he shared a testament about his brother. Who would be in the Lord, then he would drift away. And then he would, you know, hug. I think he would smoke, drink, and just certain habits. So in prayer one time, God showed him about three evil spirits that kept following his brother. And as he would go on, he would yield to this spirit, which was leading him to do something in particular. Another time he would yield to this one. And so God in prayer asked him to address them and he addressed them and told him in about the number of days, gave him days, in so many days, I can't recall the exact days, so many days he's going to be saved and commit his life to Christ. And exactly those days happened, he gave his life to Christ, committed, and the guy went on to, to the ministry to save God. Dealt with the spiritual forces that were oppressing him. We are dealing with a lot of our young people now getting into these issues of drugs and so on. It's actually becoming big in a Swatini. Let's not just think it's just leaves we are dealing with here. There could be a spiritual forces pushing these children. Hallelujah. And we need a church that can pray. I've told you a story of a young lady who used to come to choir. We had a youth group. So she would come there. We didn't know what was going on with her life. So one day I was praying in the house with a friend of mine. And as we prayed, he told me he just saw a vision. And in the vision, firstly he said he had seen, us, had seen an open vision where he saw like smoke coming over on her head. Smoke. Then now, this day as we are praying, I think God was speaking to him. He says he saw something like a monkey sitting on her, like on her, like this. So as we prayed, he saw that thing fall off and run away. It was the following day we went for practice on a Thursday. This girl, after practice, says, no, I have a confession to make. She said, do you know that I smoke? We didn't ask, we didn't know. Then she says that day when she woke up, she would go to the market and then that's why she would obviously hide. So she got that cigarette to smoke there. She said she tried to inhale and she couldn't. So she put it off. Went home. Then she was preparing to come for that practice. And prayer meeting. We used to pray and then practice. She said she tried to do it. Because she would after that chew gum. She tried to do it. She failed again. She opened her back and said this is the cigarette. We didn't know. Just following day from a prayer meeting on our knees where we dealt with spiritual forces behind this. <laughs> mm. 
And I said, but pastor, what are you talking about? What's in the Bible? Let me end. The last thing, we must pray to possess the promises. Pray to possess the promises. Now, just because God has said it, doesn't mean you should sit back. He may be calling you to pray. Just I'll end with this example. Elijah. We know that what Elijah did was based on what God said. Amen? God said they will, it will not rain. But when James is reporting, he says James prayed. When he comes back to announce this time that it's going to rain, but he still did what? He still prayed. This is what the Bible says in James 5, 17 to 18. I'll ask you to stand as I'll be reading this verse. Stand with me. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth yielded its crops. I want you to see that what wants to do in your life and in your family and in the people around, he wants to use you, he wants to partner with you. It's amazing. God wanted to send rain, but still Elijah still needed to pray. God has given all these great promises, but they still require us to ask. They still require us to pray. We are talking about ministering to your family. You owe it to your family to be a man of prayer. A woman of prayer. When we come for the main class, we'll deal with part of, part of what we'll do will be this part. What's your game plan? Here I'm not talking about prayers. You know those prayers after when you say amen, you can't even remember what you have said. I'm talking about conversation with God. Where you walk out with a word from God. Where God can talk to you uniquely about each child. And you can minister to them based on God's design as he reveals it to you as a parent. Where it's not hit and run, but you are partnering with God. Praying prayers that get answered. So today I'm not just talking about go pray. I'm saying go pray prayers that get answered. But I'm also calling you to be able to pray, to hear from God, to pray in such a way God can lead you to deal with the darkness, to pray, to receive the promises. Amen. I want you to just begin to pray where you are, just responding to God. Hallelujah. Father, I give you praise. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Lord, I ask you to transform lives. I pray that as the word went forth, let, let, let the, the lukewarmness, the compromise towards prayer just die out. I pray, Lord, that you raise us up as an army. If you've used being busy as a reason not to engage with God, just today ask, Lord, forgive me. Because you cannot afford to, not to, Talk to your partner. Jesus. 
Let transformation happen, Lord. Let it happen. I know, Lord, there are people here who just don't know this type of praying. I pray that you draw them close to yourself. You teach us to hear your voice. That we cannot, we can minister with precision, not with a hit and run. Like a clean sweat, but where we know what you are saying. That even when something bad will happen, and we it's beyond now what we can do. We can know in advance, you can tell us and prepare us. You've done it for many others. Jesus. Hallelujah. May the grace of the Lord be with you today. I'm asking the Father to make his face to shine on you. May your prayer life come alive. And may you have such a relationship with God that your prayer stops just being an event. A performance. It becomes a conversation where you hear life giving words. And then you will be able to speak life into your family and to your marriage. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.